the interwebs. I know you miss me. That's how you couldn't be held. Um, really crappy couple weeks. It's true. It's been crappy on both ends of the camera. Um, but I will finish what we started. <laughs> View the more comical book. Ha ha ha! Yay for props that just happen to be lying around. This is why we film in the back of and a comic book store. Because there's always shit to keep us amused. That and because they said we could. And improvise oh. silent co hosts. It's true. There's, you know, there's always somebody I can draft that is nonsense. Anyone else think that this vinyl Willy Wonka figure looks like he was designed to be on, in like one of those cutaway scenes on uh, Family Guy? He does indeed. That's that's what I see. As I see Family Guy's Willy Wonka. Um, look at finally. Um, hey, Dad. All right. Let us start with the Civil War dose number trace. Oh. <coughs> Normally I'm tired from work. Now I'm tired from my daughters are home. <laughs> They're exhausting. Um, They're your children, so naturally. Yeah. I blame their mothers. All right. Um. Civil War dose. Look, it looks like the Hulk is killing everybody. But no, that's just from a a vision that the Hulk might kill everybody. Now, um, the response I was given yesterday is because Bendis is Bendis, and Bendis does what Bendis wants. The only real problem I had with this, it was good. It took me by surprise. I managed to avoid the interweb spoilers um, because, once again, Marvel did that kind of Marvel jumping their own gun thing where they said, hey, this is a big deal, so we're going to have a midnight release. And then they gave the story about what was the big deal to, I don't remember, it was Entertainment Weekly, whoever they gave it to, released it on TV and the internet at like 9.30 on the day that you had to wait till midnight to get, so you still had it spoiled <laughs> like three hours before you could go buy it. Meh. I managed to avoid that. Um, and was actually genuinely surprised because I didn't think the person who was going to die was going to die, and I didn't think the person who did the killing would do the killing. Um, so, by avoiding uh, by avoiding Marvel and the internet, I was able to enjoy a Marvel comic. Um, Go fig. It's crazy. Um, but my only actual problem with the issue was... I know Marvel's not necessarily famous for, you know, continuity, and I get that, uh, you know, hard continuity can be a pain in the ass in comics, so you gotta, you know, play a little, a little loosey-goosey when you need to. But, in this, the Hulk explains, Banner explains that he hasn't turned into the Hulk for a year, and he explains why, and it's because of this whole process he's been doing to himself and testing on himself with dead gamma cells or whatever it is that he's doing. And I'm like, um, literally just read the last two issues, you know, just, one just came out, like, the last show we did, so like three weeks ago, of the Totally Awesome Hulk, in which Banner hasn't been the Hulk for not quite a full year, and for totally different reasons that they just explained in that, and did a great story with, that apparently Marvel and Bendis said, nah, fuck it. Do what I want. I ain't reading the Totally Awesome Hulk, and I'm like, but the thing about the Totally Awesome Hulk is, that's not just a moniker, that book is totally awesome. So, um, that made me go, huh. Um, but other than that, the story itself was good, and as for the spoilery-ishness, um, three, two, one, Banner is killed by Clint Barton, uh, Hawkeye kills him, claiming that Banner made him promise to do it if he ever turned again. And he said that the reason he went to Clint was he goes I know you'll he goes you'll feel bad about it you'll you'll think you'll feel bad about it afterwards but you won't let that stop you from doing what needs to be done whereas everybody else will will hesitate and that'll get people killed. Um, Tony of course loses his shit because this is a second friend he's lost all because people keep acting on shit that hasn't happened yet and Tony still isn't convinced will definitely happen. So um, you know just getting real. Over at DC, we have the first issue of New Superman. It was 
Okay. Um. It's the Chinese Superman, right? Yeah, this is the 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 Chinese Superman. Um. Kind of had a little bit of the, you know, Kyle Rayner and a little bit of the Ronnie Raymond feel of someone who isn't really prepared for any of this, getting powers, and a little bit of the Superboy, con the New 52 Superboy concept, and something that we've seen a lot in comic with the guy who, you know, clearly I was built, designed by the government to be a, a weapon, but I'm, you know, doing my own kind of thing. Um, just mix it with the fact that this, this kid, when you meet him, he's a dick. Even his father says no, and when he first be, does something heroic, when he first he's harassing a kid, he's bullying a fat kid, um, that he calls something like like pig boy or fat boy, a little pig or whatever it is that he calls him, and uh, the kid's rich, and at the time at the moment, China's first real supervillain or Shanghai's first real supervillain shows up, and this is a guy who terrorizes rich people, so the kid had just stolen the fat rich kid's soda and he goes I don't know why I did it but you know and he throws the soda at the villain and the villain just looks at him like what the fuck and flies off but all of this is caught by Lainey Lan um, because every Superman needs a reporter with a double L name yep. um, so Lainey Lan catches this wants to interview him his father tells him I'm not going to be there for the interview I know why you were hanging out with that kid in the first place you weren't hanging out as two friends you were harassing him because that's what you do you want me to, i know what kind of person you are you really want me to tell the world any little report and the kid's like all bummed because he's like ah, i could have died he, he, you know he did the right thing he's kind of torn on that so uh also the dad has a conspiracy theory about a secret government organization called the um ministry of self-reliance who it turns out do exist and they're the ones who give our boy his powers um because they see him on the news and go this is the kid we're looking for um, so all in all, good, not great. He, the kid goes off kind of doing his own thing the second he gets powers. So they call in the, the Batman and Superman, the Batman and Wonder Woman of China. Um, because apparently they found ways to replicate the powers in people and, um, it does seem their, their reasoning for picking this kid while, you know, he's already on the news and people look at him like he's a hero. But it still seems sort of arbitrary for something as, as controlled as a secret Chinese government group. Um, also, the art, you know, is fine for what it is. But the one flaw, and I don't know if this is supposed to be on purpose and ironic, or if it's just um, the way it worked out. But as he's picking on the kid, he says, you know, hold up. Don't tell me you think I'm the tubby kid with glasses and the punchable face. Oh, come on. Does he even look at all important to you? Uh, no, this is me, broad-shouldered, handsome, you know, like a movie star. But he, he's drawn just as pudgy as the other kid. I don't know if that's, I can't tell if is it's supposed to be like, you know, the irony is he sees himself one way, but really he's the same as, as what he's picking on. Or is it just that, you know, that artist's style makes him just as, you know. So, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but it was okay. I'll give it a couple more issues. Um... Before I officially decide either way, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It kind of fell somewhere above meh, but below. Oh. So, it's <laughs> a so kind of. Mo. Mo. Maybe a little robot. Um, Nightwing Rebirth. Um, this was good. This kind of nicely bridges the gap uh, between. The Grayson series and the henceforth Nightwing puts him back in his costume, explains why, um, mentions the Superman mythos of Nightwing and Flamebird, um, has a little bit of everybody. It's got, uh, you know, it's got Batman, it's got Damien, it's got, um, his partner that he calls Tony that hates to be called Tony from, uh, um, his days with Spiral. It's got uh, Helena. It's got the school that he that they were based out of. It's got Midnighter, um, Midnighter, and Nightwing. Midnighter likes to refer to Nightwing as um, his arch frenemy, and his other favorite name for him is he calls him his nemesister. 
<laughs> he refers to Nightwing as his nemesis. But um, all in all, Nightwing is back. Still has a particular agenda. Um, it touches on his having been um, in that story arc that, that crossed over with everything, the, the Robin War, where he ended up saying, yes, I'll join the Court of Owls if it means you'll leave Damien and everybody else alone. Um, and now that's his, his, he wants to be, his, you know, he just came from being the spy thing. He, you know, he was the Cape Crusader dynamic duo member. And now he's kind of going to mix the two and go back to being Nightwing, but still be um, working from within to try and take down uh, the Court of Owls. Who have just changed, they decided to go deeper into shadows. So they just changed their white masks to black owl masks. Because they're darker. Um... Flash rebirth. Flash number two. Uh, I'm loving the new the new direction on Flash. The the lightning keeps striking and everybody keeps getting superpowers. Um, Flash has an for now a sidekick that that isn't Kid Flash. Kid Flash is off training. New Kid Flash is off training on his own. Um, Wally West 2.0 is off training on his own. Um, I love 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 the art. Um, Who's, who's the art on this? Uh, oh yeah, Carmine uh, uh, did John Domenico. So good. Uh, I, I love that art. He's got like a... Um, two artists that he reminds me of, and only one of them is coming to me. It's like a... Like a there's a little bit in the faces that makes me think of Bart Sears. But without everybody constantly being flexed, um, and it's just good. It's 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 a good read. It's 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 a good look. Go with it. Uh, let's see. Wacky Raceland number two gives us a backstory to um, Dick Dastardly that makes him well a dick. Um, but sympathetic, so, sorta. Not really. If it had been beyond his control, true, I would have been sympathetic I said instead. Sort of. I'm just surprised no they didn't talk about um, Motley in it too. Not sure. I mean, I like it, but I'm not sure if I'm loving it. Um, especially compared to, it's hard to be part of this um, Hanna Barbera launch. It's hard to be any of the other books when they're next to. Um, Hey, even the Flintstones the other week made me laugh. And, and I hated the Flintstones cartoon, so maybe that made it easier for me. Like, there are some people online who are loving it, some people online who are like, this is horrible, why would they do this? And I always hated the Flintstones cartoon, even as a kid growing up in the 70s and 80s, it'd be on, and I just, I hated it. He hated it. He hated it. So, I guess I'm not as upset by changes <laughs> to, the, to the thing I hated. Um... Let's just hope they don't add in Mr. Gazoo. Um, Civil War 2, Choosing Sides 2. See how it's Moon Knight with his shield symbol? It's not Moon Knight. It's Nick Fury. Nick Fury dresses up like Moon Knight because Nick Fury's pretending to be dead. And he figures Moon Knight's nuts anyway, so nobody will question why he's doing what he's doing. Plus, he's like, the real Moon Knight is currently in an insane asylum. So that gives him an alibi, so no one will actually think it's him doing all of this. So he's he's covered all of his bases. Um, first story is war, called War Machine, though it's um, really kind of a whole group of people dealing with um, War Machine's death in their own way. Um, it's written by Jeremy Whitley, who writes all the uh, the Princeless stories for. Um, for Action Lab and has currently been hired on to do um, the un something I forget what adjective they gave her, but the the new Wasp book with the new with Hank Pym's stepdaughter as the Wasp. Um, so that was good, and the art was really nice. Um, I skimmed through the Goliath story mostly because the art just didn't grab me. Action Comics number 959. Oh my goodness. It's 
Superman versus real Superman versus real Doomsday. Um, more is hinted at who this Clark Kent is. There's apparently a backstory there. Um, it's got a cover by Clay Man. We know Clay Man. Hi, Clay. Oh, that's not Clay. That's a cover. Um, anywho. I'm loving the the new, you know, it's 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 Dan Jurgens writing Superman, it's Dan Jurgens writing the real Superman. I'm 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 so happy with this book. We've got um, Lois and Jonathan back at the house, um, Clark and Lex. Clark trying to get a feel on on New Fifty Two Lex, New Fifty Two Lex. Trying to be Lex, um, and there's a fight that takes them under underground. Throughout the city, all over. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm loving action. I'm so happy. I'm just so happy with this. So I'm... Green Lantern Rebirth number one was good. Um, it's like the uh, Nightwing one. This really is, is just kind of bridging the gap. This one doesn't do it as completely as Nightwing did. Um, basically what it does is put, um, how it doesn't get the other lanterns back from wherever the, the, the other universe is that they've been in. It shows Kyle as the white lantern again. Um, so that made, you know, only for like a couple of panels, but he's alive, he's there, he's whatever. Um, and then, uh. Mainly what it does is get Hal Jordan back as a Green Lantern. He's not wearing the gauntlet anymore. He forges his own ring. Sinestro is old in the beginning of this. At first I thought it was like showing a potential future, but apparently he just is old now. Um, not sure what's up with that. They don't really explain. Uh, but uh, Hal... Forges a, a new ring, <sighs> recites the oath, and is Green Lantern again. Um, on this page, he's got a couple of random seams on his shoulder. On this big page, flying, he doesn't. I'm okay if those are the only. This, other than that, like I said, there's a lot of a lot of seeds planted, but not a lot of anything really happens here other than how becoming green you know a, an actual green lantern again which if that's all it did i'm good with it and because if it got rid of the seams i'm even better with it um but uh so yeah it's another gap you know uh gap bridger but it doesn't bridge the gap quite as as cleanly as um the nightwing one did uh batman detective comics it's on issue, you know, 936 is like, what, the second or third issue of this? Third issue, and it's already thrown me a curveball that I did not see coming. Um, so, well, well played, well played, uh, well played, James Tinian. Um, the team is working semi-cohesively, uh, even though he is only in it for a little bit, Clayface steals steals the show. I love Clay, I love what they're doing with Clayface in this, and they're watching a you know a clip of Batman who has been taken down by the colony. Um, as they're watching the the video of this, everyone's like shocked by Batman getting you know outnumbered, Batman losing to anything, um, and Clayface just points out there's this uh, clip of Batman getting punched in the face, and Clayman's like, oh wow, that was a good hit. I always wanted to pull something off like that. And everybody just kind of looks at him. He's like, "What? A good hit is a good hit." You know, he's like, <laughs> "He's like, I'm not rooting for it." There's some great um, interplay between um, Tim Drake and Katie Kane. So uh, I'm loving this book. This book is is, is like perfection. Um, Civil War Two, Captain America. Uh, what's this? New Avengers Thirteen. All right. Um, Songbird's in trouble. Shield is a mess. Um, and our AIM Avengers 
constantly getting the shit end of the stick. Um, but the thing that intrigues me most is there's a little line in here that they don't get back to. He says, "You're not the only ex New Mutant on the base. Remember, I'm sure our mutual friend could fill could fill in if you." And they say, "Hang on, what's the base?" And I'm like, "What? Who's their mutual friend? Who's the other New Mutant, former New Mutant on on hand? I don't know, but I'm intrigued." Intrigued. And I can't wait to read U.S. Avengers, which is apparently what that's evolving into. Web Warriors. This is like my guilty pleasure book. This book is fun and funny. Even though, you know, it can be dark, it can be serious, but for the most part, this is like my, you know, the, this is like the, the snack I hide in the back of the fridge and pull out when everyone's sleeping. That's this book. The Paybacks, number one. Now over from Heavy Metal Comics, formerly with Dark Horse. Go get the first trade of the Paybacks, the Dark Horse one. Then come read this and be amazed. Um, again, I don't need to even review the book for you. I can just read the little... It gives you the who's who stuff on the inside, but just their descriptions, you know, Emery Reigns, leader, vampire, adult in the room, doing her damnedest to keep these idiots from killing themselves. Blood Pouch, the 90s looking, Rob Liefeld looking guy who's got blood in his name and wears all these excess, excessive pouches. So he's Blood Pouch, class clown with the ability to make hard light constructs spring from his many pouches. Morning. Skisquatch, the reason Blood Pouch is in mourning, because he's dead, y'all. <laughs> um, misadventure, so cool, but like totally a traitor. Loves hitting people with that bat of hers. Psst, she's the mole. Night Night, super snooty defender of the dark, able to... All right, look, no one likes this guy. Zoe knocked him out with, her ba with a baseball bat. See? Yikes. The Soviet nunchuck, huge, Russian, sweet, loves being a turtle. <laughs> he's not a turtle. It's just the nunchuck ninja thing. <laughs> Driver. Drives the van. Continues to be mysterious. Push the button that killed Skisquatch. The Matador. The new guy. Proportionate strength and speed of a bull. Insane? <laughs> Jacob Destruction. Covered on page one. Check it out. So it just tells you. Look, he's, this character's described right on page one. Go look at it. Dr. Black. We can't keep telling you to read Buzzkill. Team Medic recently knocked out by Zoe. Not seen since. High Guard. Kind of like Superman, but if Superman was a dick. Mr. Pierce. Spooky, mysterious dude. Runs the paybacks. The concept of the paybacks... Look at this blood pouch. <laughs> I love it. Um, the concept of the paybacks is... Most superheroes can't afford to be superheroes. That's expensive shit. You take out a lot of loans. The Mr. Pierce is the guy who loans all the money to superheroes so they can get their build their headquarters and their gadgets and their stuff. If you fall behind, the paybacks are like the superhero repro crew, uh, re repo, repo crew <laughs> who come out to take that to take your you know, to to repossess your stuff, and they are comprised of other heroes who have fallen so far behind in their payments that they now have to work it off by repossessing stuff from heroes who fall off in their payments. It's this giant cycle. I don't know what to tell you other than this book is great. <laughs> night, night. Um, Strayer, I know number five this is from Aftershock. Right, Justin Jordan and uh, Juan Gideon. This book I know is good because Sean Cobble and I read it. That means it's cool. Um, it's fantasy sort of like a post-apocalyptic fantasy-esque kind of thing um there's a girl with the last dying magics and she is being pursued by people who want to wipe that out and she has enlisted the strayer to be her like conan-esque defender and she gets real um sort of if, imagine, think of anything Justin Jordan's ever written, right? And imagine that he was sitting at home with like 
two kind of TV sets going, and he was watching, uh, like, you know, oh, he was flipping through the channels late at night, and it was like, the Avatar cartoon was on one channel, and Conan the Barbarian was on another, and he went, hey, let's mash these up. And then he Justin Jordan did, and said, I can make that cool, and he did. Satellite Falling, number three. This is one of those books that, um, at last night's roundtable here at Famous Faces and Funnies, this is one of those books that, um, that Big Sexy Dave, the cameraman of the show, pointed out that there are a lot of times when I'm reviewing books where I say, I don't remember ordering these things, but then I got them and read them and they were really cool. Um, All the time. This is that series. I, I don't even remember a solicit for this. <laughs> And I just started reading it, um, and it's uh, it's a nice placeholder till um, whatever's going on with uh, over at Image and Jay Farber if they can get their shit together and start Copperhead. giving me back Copperhead. is a nice little fill-in. Um, Earth is xenophobic and doesn't like illegal aliens of the actual alien kind. They actually lynched this guy. He was an endangered species because his world got destroyed. And he, he, he and they're like, you know, this whole mob shows up and says, we don't want illegal aliens. And he's like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> and like, bear witness, this filth pretends to be a human so it can spy on us, sell us secret. No spy, fled homeworld ravaged by war, sought opportunity and land a free home of brave. And they, you know, they hang his ass. Um, because I guess they made America great again. Um, but now it becomes kind of a... Uh, she was like a, a police force on satellite. Satellite is uh, this giant satellite that has like all these different alien races, just not a lot of humans because humans are xenophobic as fuck. Um, so they're on there. Her ex-girlfriend who died on Earth, there's someone claiming to be her running around doing all sorts of terrible shit and nobody knows what it is. So she's sent off on a mission to try and find that out and she puts together her team is she gets, you know, her bartender says, I know a guy, and they start going off, and they get, you know, there's this wrestler that she thinks is going to be their muscle, but it turns out he's really a mediocre wrestler alien. He's actually great with tech, so he's going to be their, um, their tech expert. Then there's this, you know, this blue chick who's like the super, super marksman of the, of the crew. There's the stealth kind of camouflage tree frog, tree frog looking chick. And then the bartender himself is like, I'm your, I'm your pilot. I've seen you fly. You know, you, you can't drive. So he's he's piloting the space, and shit gets real from there. So this has been good. Um, I believe this is a mini. Um, I don't know. I don't care, because I'm going to read it. Because hey, that's enjoy it. it. Sounds that's, awesome. That's the kind of guy I am. Um, Old Man Logan is the last of the books I got through this week. Um, number. Number, burr, 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 eight. Um, Logan is still... Old Man Logan from the Earth, whatever Earth Old Man Logan takes place on, is now on our Earth. But he's convinced that it just means he's going to have to live through the end of the world, death of all the heroes, all over being again. tricked into murdering his loved ones and losing his family to cannibal hulks um, all over again. Um, but this uh, young genie takes him on a little tour, shows him, look, New York is still standing these guys aren't dead everything's going good and he's like he's like okay you know good and then they go to Madripoor and he's like I thought you said that was our last stop but she's throwing him a party at Madripoor with a bunch of key people that he was worried about that died in his timeline so sure enough there's um Jubilee Captain America Clint Barton and Puck so um still vampire Jubilee yeah but you know they, they're all just very happy to be reunited with Logan, or a Logan. Logan's happy to see any of them. And, of course, there's the greatest line in there. Um, Logan goes outside on his own. Like, there you are. Can't help sneaking off on your own, can you? It's in my nature, Genie. How's the party? Still going strong. Puck is a madman. How can someone so small drink so much beer? He's Canadian, is Wolverine's <laughs> response. And it's, it's all, that's, that's my new favorite thing. Um, so, be reading that. And I will see you, not next week, because next week um, I got shit to do, but I'll see you in two weeks. Actually, I won't see you. You'll see me, because that's the way internet can.
Thanks for watching another video from Gunna Geek. If you like geeky stuff, check out our podcast network, our news and articles, and our community forums. You can find it all at gunnageek.com, like us at facebook.com slash gunnageek, tweet us at gunnageek, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gunnageek, and check out our live programming at gunnageek.com slash live.